Well, okay, part two of this essay by Dar Jamal. Um, everyone should look up Dar Jamal's website, by the way. I will post a link to it once I'm done posting all this stuff. And uh, all the credit belongs to him for, uh, for writing uh, these articles. Uh, I'm just reading them. And uh, for the most part, um, I agree with them which is why I, I'm, I have um, an interest in disseminating that information. On November the 17th, Obama promised on CBS News 60 Minutes to shut down the Guantanamo Bay facility while his advisors are simultaneously crafting a plan to create a brand new system of preventive detention and national security courts. Preventive detention facilities do not give people the right to challenge their own detention, which is essentially what Guantanamo Bay is all about. Detaining people without charging them, keeping them indefinitely, and then um, <laughs> funneling them off to some other country uh, once uh, they have used uh, up, uh, once they've been used for propaganda purposes, so to speak. All we have had uh, at this moment is a suggestion of a brand change, not policy change. Obama's promises to restore the moral stature of the United States but these promises may fall flat. He has John Brennan and Jami Misek, former intelligence officials under George Tenet, leading his review of intelligence agencies and making recommendations to the new administration. Brennan supported warrantless wiretapping and kidnapping, extraordinary renditions, and Misik was involved with the politicized intelligence alleging WMDs in Iraq. They were both part of the team that provided the phony intelligence when Tennant informed Bush during the lead-up to the Iraq invasion that intelligence was to support a slam dunk. The incoming administration has also revealed that there will be no attempt to bring criminal charges against government officials who authorized or engaged in torture during the Bush presidency. The new defense team is being led by former Deputy Defense Secretary John White who is the chair of the Kennedy School of Middle East Initiative at Harvard, and Michel Flournoy, Flournoy, I'm sorry, president of the Center for a New American Security, <laughs> famed for the Iraq bombing and sanctions under President Clinton. Obama's transition team leaders are six of his top advisors, uh, fundraisers, I'm sorry, fundraisers, four of whom raised $500,000 or more for his campaign. One of them, Tom Donilon, was a lobbyist for mortgage giant Fannie Mae. We were also treated to an echo of hollow rhetoric from the Bush chambers when the new president said on uh, on CBS that it is a top priority for us to stamp out Al-Qaeda once and for all and that killing or capturing the group's mastermind Osama bin Laden was critical to US security. On that note, let us note that Obama has already made it clear that he refuses to rule out, he refuses to rule out using mercenary companies in war zones. 
He has labeled the um, Iranian Revolutionary Guard as a terrorist organization. <laughs> That's basically the Iraqi, uh, the Iran army. And he plans to escalate the war in Afghanistan. And he, and he has pledged to use unilateral force in Pakistan to defend U.S. interests. Obama's running mate, Joe Biden, despite having stated that his vote to authorize the use of force in Iraq was mistaken, was an important facilitator to the war. He has also shamelessly championed the absurd idea of partitioning Iraq into three areas based primarily on ethnicity and religion. You know, and there are other liberal, so-called liberal hawks entering or advising the Obama administration at this point, including the likes of Madeleine Albright, who, as Bill Clinton's secretary uh, to the United Nations, uh, was asked uh, by 60 Minutes, and I'm sure this is all old news by now, as to whether um, the sanctions uh, and the result of that uh, resulting in 500,000 uh, Iraqi children basically dying from malnutrition was justified, and she answered, yes, it is in my opinion, justified. So, you know, that's, it was worth it. And all, all old news, all forgotten. And, of course, the idea of uh, Obama keeping Robert Gates as Secretary of Defense is equally disturbing. Let us remember it is Gates who supports the new generation of nuclear weapons at a time when even George Shultz and Kissinger are calling for nuclear, nuclear abolition. Now, this is where this article, or my reading of this article, will end um, for tonight, because I'm certainly not a friend of Kissinger's, uh, nor uh, have I ever supported his opinions. And actually, Kissinger and uh, Bill Kristol um, are welcoming the Obama um, administration in no uncertain terms. They have made it very clear that they, um, that they uh, have no problem with this incoming administration. And that automatically means for me that I'm probably going to have a big problem with it. Um, I will continue with this uh, very excellent article by Dar Jamal. And, um, I would all, all of you to encourage to look into his writings and into his excellent website. Um, many, many important articles and first-hand accounts uh, from the situation in Iraq and the uh, Middle East as a whole. Thanks for listening. Good night.